There's going to be three activities that you're going to be doing outside. We're going to get yourself into little groups in a minute. I'm going to show you some of the activities you're going to be doing because I actually managed to Olympic maths to is a really nice way to be able to actually give the kids a reason to be measuring. And now they're just going to throw, try and get it as close to the target as possible. Oh, George did very well down there. If we were going to measure this one, which do you think you would use? At the beginning of the lesson, uh, we recap things that they know. So we look at the rulers, we look at the intervals on the rulers, the difference between maybe a 30 centimetre ruler and then a metre rule. Uh, we talk about which will be useful for the situations that they're becoming into. What we've got here set up is we've got five of the standing high jumps. And then all you need to do is a two-footed jump, all right? What you then need to do is you can use the ruler so you'd be able to put it down up against the pole that you've just jumped and then measure accurately from there. We've got the throwing ones here. So you need to be stood at your base, which is here. You take your bean bag and you're going to try and throw it as close as you can to the blue marker over there. In the target practice, they're probably going to be using the 30 centimetre ruler because they're going to be getting a lot closer. 27.5 centimetres away. Whereas when they're doing the long jump, you'd hope that they're probably going to go past a metre. So they need to be using the metre ruler. So this is the standing long jump. You've got your white line here, which you need to make sure your toes are right behind. And then what you're going to try and do is you're going to try and bounce and jump as far as you can. All right, so you're ready. You're going to jump and one of your group needs to put their finger where your furthest back heel is. Then that means you can pick up your ruler and then work out where you'd actually manage to jump to. All right? The competition side of it, I think the kids really, really enjoy it. The fact is, you know, everybody wants to try and beat their personal best. Jump. And in the process, they're obviously being really accurate with their measuring because they want to make sure if it's coming to a very close final as to who might have jumped further, they want to make sure that they've got it absolutely spot on. A really nice thing is to give the kids a camera. Really nice if it's got a video function on it as well. The children, all of a sudden, get you photographs, get you video, but from their perspective. It's them talking to their friends in the situation that they're in. Today, Annie did the high jump and her score were 29 centimetres. Then I got 36. So all of a sudden, you're getting just a little bit more from the children because they're talking to somebody who they feel very comfortable with and they're talking in the way that they do to a friend. Okay, guys, so we've finished our measuring, we've finished our jumping and our throwing and all of those things. What we've got here is we've got a Venn diagram, all right? At the end of the lesson, the children have got their information, they've got their data that they've recorded on the sheets. Uh, that data can be used for multiple things. It can be used to put into a Venn diagram to discuss what's been going on. It can be used in a, a bar chart to represent the data that the children have found. There are lots and lots of options that the children can then move on in the next lesson and use information that they've already gained. Yeah. Very good. I think this is a great maths lesson idea because it actually gives them a purpose. Rather than saying go and measure a fence or a paving slab, they're actually going out there, they're doing something they enjoy, they're working with their friends, they're talking about it and they're coming away with some really, really good results.